Is it better to print your images at home or should you send them off to a professional photo lab? I'm going to go over all the pros and cons on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. You know what to do on that site. Fill out the form, ask your own photo question. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Also, I hope you're already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel. If not, why the heck not? Go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new photo shows come out from myself and the other photo hosts right here at Adorama TV all week long just for you guys. Also, on my own YouTube channel, I've started a new series called From the Vault. I'm looking back at some of the images from my 30-year archive, telling the behind-the-scenes stories, and yes, offering fine art prints for sale, so you can check that out. I'll put the link down below to that YouTube channel. All right, let's get right to today's show. I've got a question sent in by Jorge P., and he wants to know, should I spend the money to buy a printer and make my own prints, or should I use a printing lab? Which option is better for a photo enthusiast? First of all, the importance of making prints. I think printing is such an important part of the creative process of making a photograph. It's really not a picture. It's not a photograph until you have a print in many cases. There's something about holding something in your hand, that tactile experience and feeling the texture and just feel, seeing the size, right? As opposed to swiping through images on your phone or your computer. I feel like that just doesn't have the same power as holding a physical print in your hand. I can't tell you how many times I've given a print to a client or sold a print to somebody and when they hold it in their hands, there's such a, a respect for that process. It's a, like I said, that tactile experience of actually having an item to hold that makes an image in some ways a lot more powerful than it is just swiping through it on your phone. So I'm a big fan of printing. I, I have pictures up on the walls in my office and at home and it's just something that I really love to do. I bet you've got a lot of images just sitting on your hard drives, uh, collecting virtual dust, right? It might be fun to go back through those images, pick out your best ones, and have prints made or make prints of your best ones. You're really going to see how that experience transforms the art and the craft of photography. Um, another reason to make prints is, is you, like I said before, you can actually generate income. You can sell prints. It's a lot of people make a living selling prints. There are fine art galleries, of course. Um, and there are uh, you know, lots of ways to actually sell your images. I personally offer 11 by 14 fine art prints of some of my well-known images, as I mentioned earlier, on my From the Vault YouTube series. Um, that's been a lot of fun to go back and re sort of rework the images, retone them, pulling the original raw file, going back and getting them prepared for printing, and then having those prints made and just seeing that final product and being able to actually sell it and generate some revenue. So. Now that you know why you want to make prints, let's talk about how to do it. Of course, the first option is to go ahead and send it off to a photo lab. Uh, I personally use Printique. That's a New York City-based uh, lab. They're right here in the city, but you can, of course, order from them online from anywhere. I'll put the link, of course, down below. But the top reason to use a lab like that, a professional lab like that, really is for convenience. Uh, their website is going to walk you through everything. If you've never had a really good print made of your images, it's going to it's going to help you with the cropping. It's going to help you pick the paper. It's going to help you with the sizing, the resolution, all of those things. A good lab like Printique is going to help you with that whole process. You're basically just going to send them the file you want printed, and then it's delivered to your door. That is the most convenient. I can't think of a more convenient way to have it done than that. Also. If you use a photo lab, there's no equipment to maintain. You don't have your own gear to deal with if stuff breaks or if you have, you know, uh, clogs or anything like that. There's just nothing to maintain. And also, it doesn't take up any space. Uh, some of these printers can get very large and you have to have the room either in your home or your office to uh, maintain that and keep that set up. Um, like I said, they're also going to help talk you through uh, all the, the process of doing the printing. There are a lot of things, if you don't want to deal with things like ICC color profiles and calibrating your monitor and your printer, testing new papers, all of those things, the lab has already done all of that and they will help you through that. If you don't want to deal with any of that, there are auto color correction things where somebody at the lab will actually individually look at your image and, and correct it for their equipment so that it looks as good as they can make it. So if you want that kind of help, a lab is absolutely the best way to go. Also, by using a lab, you can print 
one at a time and you can get different types of prints. If you just want one glossy print made, that's super easy to just send it to the lab and have that print made. You could also, like I said, with different types of, of printing, you could print, uh, a lab like Printique is gonna print on metal, they print on canvas, they do acrylic, all of those things. You don't have to buy all of that stuff, right? You don't, you're not gonna buy metal prints and try to make those yourself. I wouldn't even know how to do that at home. Um, if you just want one metal print, right? Um, even with glossy paper or matte paper, you have to buy complete boxes of that if you're gonna print by yourself. So if you just want one print, maybe you want three glossies and four matte you know, prints, you can just send that to the lab and get those exact quantities super easy. Um, lastly, if the print is gonna go to someone else, if you're not like signing it, for example, and you're not having it sent to you first, it's so easy to use a lab because you can drop ship, right? You order it, you can have it sent right to your client. I've had that done with clients who wanted prints from me that I'm not signing. Um, I can just order it from Printique or the lab of your choice and just have it sent right to them. Now, Printique happens to have a pro service that removes their branding. So uh, it looks like it actually just came from your studio directly, your studio, even if you don't have one, it looks very professional to do it that way. So, um, uh, so those are all some of the benefits of using a, a lab. Now, if that's so great, why would you ever print at home? Well, number one is speed, right? You don't have to wait for a print to be printed by somebody else and then mailed to you or shipped to you. Um, I can walk over to my printer and I can make a print anytime I want. There's absolutely no waiting. I have to put the time in in the beginning to make the image look how I want and do all the things, the calibration and that kind of work and the maintenance. But when I'm ready to make a print, I can just go ahead and send that to the printer and in five, 10 minutes, I'm gonna have that print in my hands. Um, so that's really nice. I can also print as much as I want. If I want to you know, make test prints and try different colors and, and maybe try black and white and then a sepia and all of these different things, I can go ahead and make as many test prints as I want without having to go back and forth with a lab um, to see how it looks and then make changes and then wait again for the uh, next print. I've actually found that I print more of my images because I print a lot at home uh, in my studio. Uh, that allows me, like I said, anytime I'm inspired, I have a new image that I like, I'll just make a print of it just for the heck of it, just to see what it looks like. Um, another big one is cost. Um, there's a lot of debate about exactly what it costs to make a, an inkjet print at, at home. Um, and it really depends on a lot of different factors, but in general, the price is gonna go down as you make more prints, right? The economics of scale. Um, the exact price is dependent on a bunch of factors and it's really kind of hard to calculate because it depends how much of each ink that you use when you make the print, the size of the prints you make. Like if you make test prints, those are gonna you know, count obviously towards the cost. Uh, the paper type you use is gonna have a different cost. Some papers are can be very expensive if you buy really high quality fine art papers as opposed to inexpensive, you know, cheap glossy ones. And even the printer does cleaning cycles and that uses ink and it's really hard to calculate how much ink that uses. But generally, as I said, it's less expensive uh, the more prints you make and definitely less expensive than using a lab because they have to make those same calculations as far as how much each print costs them to make. And then they need to make a profit, right? They're a business. So, um, if you're paying a retail price for that, if you print yourself, you're paying the wholesale price. You're really only paying your costs and your time. Um, so it is gonna cost less, all other things being equal, to print at home as opposed to using a lab. Um, and then most importantly, printing at home, it really gives you control over the entire process. You're creating the image all the way through from you know the time you took the, you know or the time you thought about the picture to the time you hold a print in your hand and there's something amazing about that right to if you're that kind of person that likes to control that process um, it really is part of the creative process and it's very satisfying to see that final result when you create the print. So there are definitely pros and cons both ways. Um, if you were gonna get a printer of your own, uh, I'm a Canon Explorer of Light, so I know the Canon line the best and that's what I use. You really could start with something very simple, very small. They make a line of printers called Selfie Printers. Uh, I think it's the CP1300 is the, is the current version now. It's about 130 bucks. And then you buy the paper and ink. It's not really ink, it's a, more of a thermal process, but you buy those together. So the cost is really set on that. There's no cleaning cycles or anything like that. It makes very small, like postcard size, four by six-ish 
size prints. It's a good way to kind of give like handout prints, or I use those as almost like Polaroids on a shoot where if I'm doing a portrait and I want to like take a look at it as a print or give it to the model or something like that right there on site. It's kind of nice to have that little printer. It's battery powered as well, but that's definitely a real sort of consumer level printer. When we start getting into the professional level printers, um, you're going to get, you're going to be able to make bigger prints. You get things like archival inks. You're going to have more paper types available to you in the Canon line. It's the image Prograph line. And there are really roughly three levels that, that I would consider. Uh, for these pro printers. Something like the Pro 300 is their newest one. It's a 13 inch printer. So that means the one size can be, one side, excuse me, can be up to 13 inches. So you can make 11 by 14 inch prints on the Pro 300. Um, it's a really nice printer. Uh, then there's the Pro 1000, which is, uh, I have one of those. That's a 17 inch printer. So you can make bigger uh, images here. I've got this, this print. This is a picture I made in Central Park with my, I did the video about uh, shooting infrared. And this is the bow bridge in central park. This is a 17 inch 17 by 22 inch print that I've signed. And I can make that here in my office. Uh, it's a 17 by 22 on that pro 1000 because it's a 17 inch printer. And then if you want to get into the big mama, uh, in my shared studio in Brooklyn, I've got the pro 4,000. The new version is the 4,100. That's a 44 inch uh, printer, that's hardcore, right? That's like, if you're really serious, this is what you do for a living. Uh, it's delivered in a crate, right? And it needs significant space. I have to keep it in that studio because I just don't have room here in my Manhattan space. Um, but I've made 10 foot long prints with that because again, one, one edge has to be, can be 44 inches. The other direction you can print with roll paper as long as you want. So I just did a video where I um, made that 10 foot print and it's quite impressive. Now, obviously you're only going to go with something like that. If you're, you know, doing that kind of work, it really, it can be overwhelming to print yourself. And this is one of the reasons a lot of people prefer to go to a lab. Um, because again, there's, there is some maintenance and there's, you know, color profiling and all of that kind of stuff that, that can be confusing until you wrap your head around it, but it gets easier as you learn that. Like I said, I've been making these prints for my, from the vault series. Uh, I'm using the Canon pro 1000 to do those. I'm making 11 by 14 fine art prints. I'm using really great gallery quality, uh, matte paper. So, uh, that works for me for that particular series. But I also have used the lab for one-offs for metal prints. I've made metal prints as gifts for clients. Um, and that I can have it printed right at the lab and sent right to the client. I don't have to touch it. It's really an amazing thing. So Jorge, you asked me which is better for an enthusiast photographer. Really, it depends on how much printing you're going to do. If you're just printing once in a while, right? It, uh, I'll print here, a print there, one print a month, two prints a month. It's really probably not going to be worth the work involved in printing yourself or the cost for that matter. Also using a lab is going to allow you to experiment with other cool surfaces. Like I mentioned, like metal, acrylic canvas, uh, they do photo books, things like that. So you just kind of do it as you need it. And it's really a lot easier. You're going to pay a little bit more for that convenience and that, um, having those options, but, uh, it is really a great way to go. Now, if you are printing a lot, photo enthusiast who's you know making a lot of prints, you're giving away, maybe you're selling them, maybe you want them for your wall. Um, or if you're just the type of person who really wants to learn more and become confident with things like color profiles and calibration, you are going to save some money and take back that control by investing in a good printer and doing it yourself. So Jorge, I hope that answers your question. I hope that helps a bunch of you out there as well. Remember, if you have a question that you think is going to help other photographers, go ahead and submit it at askdavidbergman.com. I hope if you like this video, you go ahead and like, use the like button down below. You can comment, please subscribe, keep those photo questions coming. I really appreciate it. I'm back here every Monday on the Adorama TV YouTube channel with a brand new question. So I'll see you back here next Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on Ask David Bergman.